Hello and welcome to this video in the lockdown learning series where we're going to take a look at making some drum loops out of the complete start included content. So just, just mixing these kind of things together, just some ways of doing this. So as ever, I'm going to add a new instrument track. It's going to be complete control. So we've got complete control and in this one we're going to narrow it down to some loops. So I'm going to start off with drums and scroll through here or let's just find some kick loops shall we so we'll see what we want that's probably a bit full on for me i'm dave etc i'm going to go for something a little less abusive because uh, when i'm recording this certainly it's it's early in the morning so i'm not quite ready for anything too much so I think you're probably going to settle for graphite, so um, double click that. So there we've got graphite. Now, if I play my keyboard, what you can't see, but you can possibly hear, in fact, no, I'll put the on-screen keyboard on so you can see it, because that's the kind of guy I am. If I play C3, I'm getting that. If I change octave, so I'm using the cursor keys to change octave, so you'll see down here I'm now next octave up. The tempo stays the same, but the pitch is changing. Up another octave. Should we want to do that, etc. So you can fine tune it. Because sometimes you find the bass drum, you know, may not match with the notes of your, your bass or your chord progression, etc. So you can tune it. I'm not going to stick with the on-screen keyboard, so for the rest of the time, I'll just be playing my off-screen keyboard because uh, it will trip me up otherwise. So that kind of thing, we've got that. So there I've got a bass drum loop in there. If I want to play four bars, so you can see here it's one, two, three, four bars worth of loop, I can do that. I could do as much as I want. So I'm going to keep the MIDI loops to the same size as the audio loops. So I'm just going to pencil in five bars there, four bars, sorry. Let's call that kick. A quick tip is if you rename your track, if you hold down shift when you rename it, it renames the parts as well, which makes life a little bit easier. And also you can hide where you stole your things from. Um, so let's go for C, let's go for C3. And I just need to pencil in a long note. So I'm gonna turn snap to quarters because that will be easier to deal with. And then, there's my kick drum and now it's just a case of repeating that to build up the rest of the track so I'm going to add another instrument track it's going to be complete control and this time excuse me this time I'm going to pick up again drums and then let's go for hi-hats let's see what we've got under here that's good enough Some nice variations there. But I'm going to go for turned. So double click that to load that up. So you can see that's uh, an eight bar loop. So that will get played because of the way this works. This synchronizes to Cubase's tempo and will play that wherever. So if we start playing at bar three, it will, it will start playing at bar three. So we can see that in action. So if I pencil in a new part there and then pencil that in so that starts at bar three if we play this we can see it starts there you can play around with this kind of thing let's add another one this time uh, drums and uh, let's just pick uh, a snare Probably a bit much for me again. Let's go for that. Reminds me of Cameo. And again, it's just a case of drawing these in. So I can even copy the kick part across. So just hold down the Alt key, copy that across, rename that snare. That will play straight away. because they're all triggered at the same MIDI pitch. So we can soon, if we wanted to change the pitch of that, 
we could change that to something else. And then, etc. So you can quickly build up an entire track just using these uh, available samples. So let's pick up, let's try some bass. So let's see what bass loops we've got. I think that might be quite interesting. So let's try that and again, Let's just copy that part down, call it bass. I'm going to recall that one snare and let's see what we got. And off we go. We can also add one shots. So let's just do that here. So again, with one shots, We've got all sorts of things. So let's find a symbol we can put in. So crash symbol, so drums crash symbol. Yeah, some of them are a bit wacky. I'll go with that one for the time being. And again, we can program it in or we can just copy that over. And because it's a one shot, that should just get played once. Now clearly that's at the wrong pitch. That's not the pitch we intended it. Now here you're definitely gonna to wanna to pitch it to the pitch of the other instruments, so the bass, etc., because that's got some definite a definite pitch uh, element to it. So you can soon build up, as you can see, you can soon build up something from these loops uh, using just the loops and the one shots from complete start and away you go. So your MIDI programming skills are pretty minimal at this point because it's just literally a note just to trigger them. But that's how often things were done uh, back in the day, said the old man, uh, when he had his Akai samplers, etc. So this is, in a way, MIDI-wise, this is like going back to just using a, a, an external sampler, which is how things used to be, certainly in the 90s. So hopefully you found that uh, useful and possibly inspirational, so you can spend a bit of time in complete control looking at how you can integrate all these different loops and all this content together and start playing around with those. I hope you found that useful, and I'll see you again soon.